It's the Wendy Williams Show. Let's get started. It's time for. Come on. How many of you co-hosts are from out of town? Well, welcome to New York, cause we're back. Our governor, Andrew Cuomo, has lifted the COVID restriction. Which means, we're not, calm down. <laughs> because I'm a little frightened, but okay. That means no more temperature checks, no more social distancing. Everyone could be at full capacity with your businesses, no masks, but except for at the schools, the children need the masks. If you're gonna be on public transportation, you know, the subways and the buses, you need your mask. If you're in do your doctor's office, like in the waiting room and stuff, you need your mask. Uh, if you're at the Wendy show, you need your mask. <laughs> If you're in my building, you need your mask. <laughs> and we still have those four things in the elevator, which I like that. Yeah. I don't mind that at all. Oh, I yeah, I don't think I'll be cured until, hey, what is this leftover from yesterday? <laughs> you can't test it. <laughs> Why? Let somebody else test it. <laughs> if I perish, I'll do it right here for the numbers. <laughs> um, <laughs> Someone's slipping. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so New York is back, so. And, oh, and by the way, and by the way, uh, so he said that yesterday, so last night there was a full, you know, um, the fireworks and people were out and so on and so forth. I haven't gotten the crime report, but. Um, oh. Norman, you know what I mean. Uh-huh. Were you out last night? Uh, absolutely. Did you see any, were people acting out of order? Uh, no, everybody was fine. Everybody was well behaved. I was well out behaved. last night too. Uh-huh. But everyone, and everyone's fine. Yeah, it's nice. And I saw the fireworks, I, like. <laughs> yeah. 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 In the meantime, over in Jersey. <laughs> Danielle Staub of The Real Housewives of New Jersey is lashing out at Bravo. Oh. Now, I like Danielle. I think that she is beautiful. I like, I like her. I like Danielle. And you know, she's one of those scrappy girls who's had to make her own way, and sometimes when you have to do it your own way, you don't care about the rules, you just do it. So she says, Bravo is paying millions of dollars to criminals. Like Teresa, she says. Oh. Mm -hmm. And allegedly Erica Jane. Oh. There's so many criminals. At, like, <laughs> <laughs> they're all criminals. So Danielle, right, is cool. And she's not even a housewife housewife. She's like a friend of. She's right now not even on the show. Okay. Yeah. Well, she's calling for them all to be fired from Bravo. Oh. Well, I don't want them to glorify criminals either, but if they didn't do that, then why would we watch? <laughs> it's freezing 
I'm like, this sat here all night or something. Oh, disgusting. <laughs> there might be dust in here. Does it have like the film at the top? <laughs> I, I mean, I feel okay so far. I only took one sip. Oh. Danielle is a criminal herself. You remember, oh, here's a. <laughs> But look, she's got the dimple in her chin. Mm -hmm. Pretty criminal, right? She was arrested back in 1986 for kidnapping a man. Oh we talked about this, but I'm gonna remind you. Allegedly, uh, there was a demand for $25,000 in ransom from the family of the man. Now, the man was the big drug dealer who would deal the drugs to Danielle's boyfriend at the time. But when I guess the boyfriend got to the house, they tied him up or something? Yeah, the boyfriend, she, the, she was dating a drug dealer. The boyfriend was a drug dealer. And they gave money to like their employee the, and uh, to sell the drugs, but somebody robbed him. So they kidnapped him and demanded the ransom money from his, to make up the money, Dan allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> Danielle, Danielle, crime knows crime, so I guess you know what you're talking about. By the way, Erica, Jane, and Danielle used to work at the same strip club in New Jersey, Lodi. Yo, you remember Shakers in Jersey, in Lodi, New Jersey? They worked there together. I don't remember Shakers, but maybe some of you older men in the crowd. <laughs> well, Danielle is slamming Erica Jane in the Hulu documentary. Um, and it's called Housewives and, Hus and the Hustler. I haven't seen it yet. It's on Hulu. I intend on watching. Norman has seen it and he said it was pretty- It was really good. No, really but- Really good. But here's what we discussed behind the scenes. Uh -huh. And I'm gonna bring it to the front of the scenes. Right. <laughs> of course. <laughs> why, why be private? Right. <laughs> when public sells the show. Yeah. Right. No, but um, you originally said that Erica Jane probably knew nothing about what he was up to, his criminal uh -huh. activity. Yeah. But after seeing the first episode, yeah. you said... I think maybe she might have known a little <laughs> something about his crimes. That maybe? he's a real criminal. Yeah. Well, he definitely looked really bad in this documentary. It's not... What he did was, like, terrible. I want to watch it. I know how to get the Hulu. I'm, I want to watch it. Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. Not allegedly I'm going to watch, but allegedly. I even got, I got the allegedly sign. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but what he allegedly did was terrible and awful. Yeah, he robbed innocent people of their life savings. Uh-huh, allegedly and, robbed them. And used it on building mansions and a better lifestyle yep. for he and uh, Erica. Erica Jane. All right, well, that's on Hulu. Anyway, um... There's nothing like the... ...sauce that started in an Italian mother's kitchen. Ragu sauce. Cook like a mother. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Perfect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's not even what Doug is supposed to be doing. Oh, right. We all multitask here. <laughs> Doug is my floor manager. That is a huge job on TV. Aww. Thank you, Doug. This is like an intern job right here. But it's okay, it's okay. Look, we multitask. Take the name of the intern, by the way. All right. <laughs> No, but, um, okay, Sweetie says the gifts shouldn't be returned after a breakup. <laughs> she says, if it's mine, it's mine. Well, we've talked about this for the last several seasons here on the show. We've talked about it through my radio career and everything. And, you know, my thing is that an engagement ring is something different. Sometimes they need to be returned. I've even been to the sometimes, because I used to be like, they always need to be returned. But sometimes they need to be returned. But as far as a gift, 
No, gifts should not be returned. Um, if if um, Quavo, is that? Yeah. If Quavo gives Sweetie, you know, five Birkin bags and they break up, he should not have to give, or she should not have to give them back to her. You know? And, and I think he took back the Bentley that he gave to her, you know, for her birthday. But see, this is the thing, girls. You gotta do your breakup out in a public place, not in your house, where he can all of a sudden run through the house and go in your closet and start grabbing stuff. <laughs> like, I want this, I want that. No, 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 no. That's some kind of pose, isn't it? Uh, you know, it should be up to the woman as to what you return and what you don't. But I can tell you this right now. For a woman who returns every last thing to a man, who, that, you win. But that's, that's only if you care. Like, I didn't return. But that's only because I, I put in my work. Plus, I probably bought most of it myself anyway. <laughs> Okay, I've got a big announcement to make. Oh, you're gonna love it. Are you available October 8th through 10th? Yes. By then, everything will be settled even more than today with regard to how we're all, you know, we're back. And October is not real cold, it's perfect. Well, guess what? Sus. I'm involved. <laughs> What's up? Freak Nick is back! <laughs> Freak Nick is returning to Atlanta October 8th through October 10th. It's gonna be at uh, Morris Brown College. It's a three day celebration of, I don't know, <laughs> booty? Of booty and and um, um, room keys. <laughs> so in our morning meeting, it's ironic because only me and Norman knew exactly what Freaknik was. Okay. Everybody else, they were either older or just not aware. Freaknik was a celebration of basically the booty. It, it, was, it was a thing that ha I'd never been to Freak Nick before, but I talked, okay. No, that's only, that's only the men part. Uh, there are people in the streets. I think we have All I see are men right there, as yeah. a matter of fact. No, we got other pictures of girls, it, right? It was the birth of twerking. You have no idea. Long before there was twerking, there was Freak Nick. But all I see are men right here, so I don't know. What yeah. uh, Okay, that's not, no, no, she looks regular. But no, no, you have no idea. The girls who wear panty shorts, like those Rihanna um, leggings I showed you yesterday. Uh-huh. You wear those to Freak Nick and watch. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I always reported on it, you know, Teddy Riley's gonna be there and this one and that one. Now this year, um, the performances are gonna be by Perfect Foils in the Freak Nick game. Ray J, Scrappy, and Adina Howard. <laughs> okay, um, just if you're planning on going to Freaknik at Morris Brown in Atlanta uh, in October, please be on your best behavior. Please, you know, respect girls. Girls, respect yourselves. Girls, if you want to wear panty thong shorts or whatever, just understand that if a man comes up and slaps you on the booty, you're at Freak Nick. So it's, it's like, what do you expect? I'm warning you right now. It's a over-sexualized, under-recognized, because now it's like, what, 30 years later since Freak Nick. Mm -hmm. Okay. Clap if you think you'll go. Disgusting. <laughs> so friend of the show, Post Malone. 
Yeah. But he's still cute. Like you could see through the tattoos and see, you know, he's still cute. He could use a tooth job maybe. His teeth look fine to me. Nothing wrong with the gap, you know. But he fixed his teeth to the tune of $1.6 million. Uh -oh. Now this is the dentist posting. His teeth are not red. The dentist is posting the diamonds on the fangs. The teeth are actually porcelain white. Do we have our porcelain white picture? Uh, yeah, that one. Boom. It's, it's kind of, it's look, 12 carats of diamonds. They're veneers, they're all fake, they're porcelain. $1.6 million though to me, and Post has the money to be able to afford this, but just because you can afford it doesn't mean that you should do it. Like $1.6 million? I think that was inflated by at least, you know, he probably paid like $30,000. Yeah. <laughs> and put the dentist's name on his Instagram, and so, you know. Um, but this is at least better than having diamonds on your forehead. Right. Yeah. yeah. Or a full diamond grill like old school back in Freaknik days when they were doing it. Oh, Flav is here. I wonder what his teeth look like now. But back in the, you know, like, so yeah, Post Malone is not doing anything that wasn't already invented. He's just doing something in his own style. And to me, he got ripped off $1.6 million. You know, doesn't mean he can't be broke by the end of five years from now. Uh-huh. I guess you just knock him out and cash him in. Well, now, now they know how to walk up to him at the Dream Hotel, uh -huh. okay? Punch him in the face, pull out his fangs. Oh, post. Okay, there's a thief in San Francisco. Which is kind of like the streets of San Francisco. If you're old enough, you remember that show. But uh, there's a thief in San Francisco that rode his bicycle into a drugstore and made, all, look at his bike. Look, uh, these are customers. They're scared. They're taking the picture. Yup. Security's like, uh-uh, we're not, we're not bothered. Mm-hmm. Rode his bicycle out. There you go. Nobody stopped him. He got away with a whole bunch of trendy at Wendy drugstore beauty finds and stuff. Okay, so with the world opening up now, do you still feel a little frightened? I do. Yeah. Yeah. Like drugstores is still that place where I'd rather pull the stuff from Trendy at Wendy or order online or something like that or, you know, or only go at night or in the early morning when I'm going with, you know, James or something. And in the drugstores, since everybody else is not wearing masks and everyone else in the world has opened up, then can you please unlock your cabinets? Because for me to wait for some NyQuil <laughs> while you search for your key to unlock it, and I'm looking for a crazy like this right here, I, I don't want the NyQuil. I'd rather just sit in my office and suffer. I'll suffer. I'll suffer. I'll suffer. <clears throat> Shout out to all the drugstores and the drugstore workers. I know that they're closing down a whole lot of drugstores, like the big national brands. It's putting people out of work and stuff like that. And I know that you all work overtime, stocking the shelves, looking out for people, riding their bicycles in. How about security instead of being in the aisles looking for people like me and you? Have you ever been stared at at a drugstore? Me too. Like recently, like, like, you know, I'm like, what are you looking at? I'm not stealing. Why don't you get to the front door and look for the bicycle driving through?
I get mad because I feel as though a lot of times security in stores and even law enforcement, they're looking at the wrong people. They're looking at me and you when they should be looking at <laughs> the man with the bicycles. <laughs> right, in a full mask. <laughs> right. In a full mask. A ski mask. When they walk in in a ski mask, you kind of like, you know, something's afoot. By the way, did you hear that there are pop-up strip, um, stripper um, uh -huh. in Chicago. In Chicago, in the parks. Yeah. What? Uh -huh. So what do you do with your children? <laughs> right. the, the strippers pop up, they got their pole, people are throwing money. Well, the world is back. Um, I know you're planning on playing a Dina Howard set, I know, but I need you. Just the one song, Freak. That's the only one I know. <laughs> yeah, the Freak until the mm, until the end. Boom, boom. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Adina. Um, but you know what? Throw in Foxy Brown with that. Foxy Brown has a memoir coming out in December. <laughs> and <laughs> you might not care. Clap if you don't even know who Foxy Brown is. <laughs> and you're old. Oh, and a regular. Oh. Yeah, hi, welcome back. We're back, we're back. Yes, yeah. But people don't read anymore, so just cause you know who she is doesn't mean you're gonna pick up the book. But December is in time for the holidays. It's being written, uh, her co-writer is Kim Osario which, yeah, a very credible writer. Um, it's calling up on the most controversial moments of her, you know, history and life and hip hop and so on and so forth. Kim, please don't be weak with this writing. Please, if you're gonna tell it, you tell it good. Yeah. You know? Foxy is very open about her life. You know, she's still, you know, dealing with her hearing and she still you, um, is a little apprehensive about coming back to you guys because it becomes a testing one, two, one, two, you know, hearing and it, it becomes, it's, it's like a thing. But I remember, right, when Foxy and Jay-Z had, um, what's that, so, Be Good? I'll Be, yeah, I'll be. that was a good one. Okay, Foxy was the star of that. Jay-Z was standing in the corner, wringing his hands, talking about, okay, all right, what do I do next? Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like all that. And then, you know, this was allegedly a romantical thing. It's, it's all right, I'll say alleged, but we know, we know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, she hit it before Beyonce. Allegedly. Mm hmm. See, I'm not a reader. Like, this is not necessarily a book that I would read, but this is a book that I would hear on tape. The thing is, is that Foxy can't do her book on tape, but get, get somebody to put this book on tape, you know, or better yet, Fox, how about put out some, figure out how to, you know, what do we do, Sus? Do you care? But I love Foxy Brown. That's you, all I can really say. <laughs> but do you care? You don't read, though. No, no, I, no, no, I read, I read. I don't really do audibles. I'm gonna I'm read it. I'm definitely gonna Audibles, read it. That's, what, that's what I said, an yeah. audible. Yeah. But she can't do an audible. I'm gonna personally read it. I'm gonna open the book, and I'm gonna read it. <laughs> Every page. Okay. Ready for your set? Okay. Foxy right. Brown set, the one of Dina Ruckett. You all ready? <laughs> we got more great show for you, everybody.